Strule Peter, or Pretty Stories and Funny Pictures. Five, the story of the man that went out shooting. This is the man that shoots the hares. This is the coat he always wears, with game bag, powder horn and gun. He's going out to have some fun. He finds it hard without a pair of spectacles to shoot the hare. The hare sits snug in leaves and grass and laughs to see the green man pass. Now as the sun grew very hot and he a heavy gun had got, he lay down underneath a tree and went to sleep, as you may see. And while he slept like any top, the little hare came hop, 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 took gun and spectacles and then, on her hind legs, went off again. The green man wakes and sees her place the spectacles upon her face, and now she's trying all she can to shoot the sleepy green coat man. He cries and screams and runs away. The hare runs after him all day and hears him call out everywhere, Help, fire, help, the hare, the hare! At last he stumbled at the well head over ears, and in he fell. The hare stopped short, took aim, and hark! Bang! went the gun. She'd missed a mark. The poor man's wife was drinking up her coffee in her coffee cup. The gun shot cup and saucer through. Oh dear, she cried, what shall I do? There lived close by the cottage there, the hare's own child, the little hare. And while she stood upon her toes, the coffee fell and burned her nose. Oh dear, she cried with spoon in hand. Such fun I do not understand. 6. The Story of Little Sucker Thumb One day Mama said, Conrad, dear, I must go out and leave you here. But mind now, Conrad, what I say. Don't suck your thumb while I'm away. The great tall tailor always comes to little boys that suck their thumbs. And ere they dream what he's about, he takes his great sharp scissors out and cuts their thumbs clean off, and then, you know, they never grow again. Mama had scarcely turned her back. The thumb was in, alack, alack. The door flew open. In he ran, the great long red-legged scissors man. Oh, children, see, the tailors come and caught our little sucker thumb. Snip, snap, snip, the scissors go, and Conrad cries out, Oh, 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 snip, snap, snip, they go so fast. They're both his thumbs are off at last. Mamma comes home, there Conrad stands, and looks quite sad and shows his hands. Ah, oh, said Mamma, I knew he'd come to naughty little sucker thumb. 7. The story of Augustus, who would not have any soup. Augustus was a chubby lad, fat ruddy cheeks Augustus had, and everybody saw with joy the plump and hearty, healthy boy. He ate and drank, as he was told, and never let his soup get cold. But one day, one cold winter's day, he screamed out, Take the soup away! Oh, take the nasty soup away! I won't have any soup today! Next day, now look, the picture shows how lank and lean Augustus grows. Yet though he feels so weak and ill, the naughty fellow cries out still. Not any soup for me, I say. Oh, take the nasty soup away. I won't have any soup today. The third day comes. Oh, what a sin to make himself so pale and thin. Yet when the soup is put on table, he screams as loud as he is able. Not any soup for me, I say. Oh, take the nasty soup away. I won't have any soup today. Look at him, now the fourth day's come. He scarcely weighs a sugar plum. He's like a little bit of thread. And on the fifth day, he was dead. Eight. The Story of Fidgety Philip Let me see if Philip can be a little gentleman. Let me see if he is able to sit still for once at the table. Thus Papa bade Phil behave, and Mamma looked very grave. But fidgety Phil, he won't sit still. He wriggles and giggles, and, and then I declare, swings backwards and forwards and tilts up his chair, just like any rocking horse. Philip, I am getting cross. 
See the naughty, restless child growing still more rude and wild, till his chair falls over quite. Philip screams with all his might, catches at the cloth, but then that makes matters worse again. Down upon the ground they fall, glasses, plates, knives, forks, and all. How Mamma did fret and frown when she saw them tumbling down, and Papa made such a face. Philip is in sad disgrace. Where is Philip? Where is he? Fairly covered up, you see, cloth and all are lying on him. He has pulled down all upon him. What a terrible to do. Dishes, glasses snapped in two. Here a knife and there a fork. Philip, this is cruel work. Table all so bare and ah. Uh, Poor papa and poor mamma look quite cross and wonder how they should make their dinner now. 9. The Story of Johnny Head in Air As he trudged along to school, it was always Johnny's rule to be looking at the sky and the clouds that floated by. But what just before him lay in his way, Johnny never thought about, so that everyone cried out, Look at little Johnny there, little Johnny Head in Air! Running, just in Johnny's way, came a little dog one day. Johnny's eyes were still astray up on high in the sky, and he never heard them cry. Johnny, mind the dog is nigh. Bump, dump, down they fell with such a thump. Dog and Johnny in a lump. Once, with head as high as ever, Johnny walked beside the river. Johnny watched the swallows trying which was cleverest at flying. Oh, what fun! Johnny watched the bright round sun going in and coming out. This was all he thought about. So he strode on, only think to the river's very brink, where the bank was high and steep, and the water very deep. And the fishes in a row stared to see him coming so. One step more, Oh, sad to tell, headlong in poor Johnny fell, and the fishes in dismay wagged their tails and ran away. There lay Johnny on his face with his nice red writing case, but as they were passing by, two strong men had heard him cry, and with sticks these two strong men hooked poor Johnny out again. Oh, you should have seen him shiver when they pulled him from the river. He was in a sorry plight, dripping wet, and such a fright. Wet all over, everywhere, clothes and arms and face and hair. Johnny never will forget what it is to be so wet. And the fishes came, one, two, three, and came back again, you see. Up they came the moment after to enjoy the fun and laughter. Each popped out his little head and to tease poor Johnny said, Silly little Johnny, look, you have lost your writing book. 10. The Story of Flying Robert when the rain comes tumbling down in the country or the town, all good little girls and boys stay at home and mind their toys. Robert thought, no, when it pours, it is better out of doors. Rain it did, and in a minute Bob was in it. Here you see him, silly fellow, underneath his red umbrella. What a wind! Oh, how it whistles through the trees and flowers and thistles! It has caught his red umbrella. Look at him now, silly fella. Up he flies to the skies. No one heard his screams and cries. Through the clouds the rude wind bore him, and his hat flew on before him. Soon they got to such a height they were nearly out of sight, and the hat went up so high that it really touched the sky. No one ever yet could tell where they stopped or where they fell. Only this one thing is plain, Bob was never seen again. <laughs> <laughs>